Hi, this is Tom again and today we are going to be talking about goals. The concept of goals has been known for a very long time, but more or less since 1960, people have started to also put their goals into testing, I mean science, right? They were designing experiments to figure out whether the goals are actually helpful or maybe it's just a myth. And it turns out that they actually are helpful and all of the science around the goals is pointing into the same direction. Setting up goals helps you achieve them. Now the numbers are different. I've stumbled um, into anything between 13 and 33 percent of um, higher probability of you achieving the goal that actually has been defined, that you have defined for yourself. So this is why we will be talking about this today because you know even 13 percent not even mentioning 33, is not anything that you should sneeze on, right? It's, if, it, if it is going to help you actually achieve what you are dreaming of in the end, I think personally that is totally worth it. Now, if you're running on a very high level, imagine how much training you need to do to improve yourself by 13%, right? And the goals are giving it to you with a lot less effort in my opinion, right? So that's why, that's why the goals are so important. Now, I want to mention something. Imagine an, an eight-year-old boy who is on a training camp and he is asked to write down his goals. And the goal that he writes down is, I want to be a part of the Olympic team. And then he also writes, the exact times that he's aiming for on the distances that he is challenging himself on. And then he also writes how he's going to achieve the big goal. It's a big goal for an eight year old, isn't it? Right? So he says that I'm going to focus hard. I'm going to train hard, work hard, and I'm going to attend every practice. And this is an eight year old boy who fast forward seven years later is a member of the Olympic teams in, uh, in Athens and he's competing with all the best athletes from around the world. The name of the boy is Michael Phelps, of course. And his goal of being the Olympic, uh, Olympic team member at the, at the age of eight definitely was something huge to aim for. But he didn't stop there. He, he went to Athens, he didn't get any medals over there because he was only 15 years old, but he had a bigger goal for the next Olympic, Olympic Games. His bigger goal was get eight gold medals competing in the Olympics, swimming on different distances. So even though he's already achieved a lot, he was always aiming higher and always setting for himself more challenging goals, right, to aim for. Now, four, year, four years later, he goes to Olympic Games in Athens. He competes. He comes, I would say, from, uh, from, from this event with a lot of achievement. For those of you that don't know, he got six gold medals in Athens. Not eight that he was aiming for, but six. Would you be content with six gold me Olympic medals? Probably yes. And I think he was content as well, but he didn't achieve his goal. Even more, some of uh, his colleagues, people he was competing with, were telling him that this goal is impossible to achieve. One guy, Ian Thorpe, I think, from the Australian team, told him that this goal is unattainable. So what did Phelps do? Did he give up? No. He took, he, he cut out the, the piece of paper from the newspaper when, uh, where the thought was saying that this goal is unattainable and he stuck it on his locker so that it gives him an additional motivation to reach out for his goal in the end. And again, fast forward four years, four, four years later in Beijing, Michael Phelps gets eight gold medals in swimming. And if he alone was a country, 
he would have been in the top 10 of all the countries from around the world during that Olympic Games. So his coach even said that he believes that Michael was the most goal-oriented person in the whole world. Now, if it's true or not, I don't know, but it definitely shows that he was working around his goals all the time and he always had something that he was aiming for, something that has pushed him forward, something that has challenged him, something that gave him um, power and strength to go to the next training session and the next training session and the next training session and doesn't matter how hard it got. So that's why the goals are so important. They give you strength and motivation to plow through the things that you have to do to get to those goals. And the road to the goal is never going to be easy, right? It also gives you clarity. So if you have a goal, it gives you clarity to make the right decisions, right? If, if, if a decision comes your way and you have to choose what to do, this or that, and the, this, this piece will get you closer to your goal, you will pick this. Why? Well, to explain this, I'll take a step back and let's talk about the human brain for a moment, just a brief moment. So, it is said that human, human's brain can process a limited amount of information uh, at any point in time, basically. And the limit is around 124 or 26 bits, I think, as far as I remember. And that's not a lot, right? With all the things that is happening around us all the time, that's not a lot. So, for example, to give you a context, listening to one person and you know, um, getting this information in takes more or less 40 bits of the processing power of your brain, so to say, right? So if you're talking or listening to three people at the same time, that basically maxes you out, right? Um, therefore, if you have something that you want to focus on, this takes priority. And now, your brain and all of our brains are basically conditioned by the evolution to focus hard on two things. The first thing is survivability. We immediately pay attention to things that um, are dangerous to us, can harm us, maybe even kill us, right? It's, your focus on those things is immediate. And the other thing that our brain focuses on immediately as well is uh, achievability or achievements. So if you have a goal that you're aiming for and you're searching for something, you're trying to do something, then your brain will automatically help you focus on those things. And again, we are conditioned by it because many years ago, if we were searching for food, our brain was helping us stay focused on the task because our, again, survivability kind of depended on it, right? If we were building a house, we were focused on building the house. Nowadays, if we try to focus on passing the exam, we will be more inclined to take in all the necessary information that will help us do that. If we are searching for a job, the same thing will happen. If we are trying to uh, build a rocket, the same thing will happen. So as long as you have the goal in mind, your brain will help you filter out everything else and focus on the things that are currently the most important to you or pose any danger to you. Therefore, goals work. Now, how to set goals? I think that the best way to approach this is to uh, go with three levels of goal setting. So the first level is somewhere here at the very top and this is your most important single thing that you're aiming for. This is something that um, will drive your um, motivation towards everything else that we will be talking about in a moment, right? This is something that, if possible, should be connected with your passion. This is your purpose. This is something where you are aiming for the mastery of this thing, right? So, it definitely can't be something easy, right? Like in the Michael Phelps example, at the, at the age of eight, he was aiming to be the member of the Olympic team. Uh, at the age of 15, he was aiming for eight gold medals four years forward, right? 
So these are huge goals and your goals should be equally big. I don't want to say that they should be as big as possible because of course you should, you should believe in the attainability of those goals. You should believe that you can get there. Maybe it will require a lot of effort and work, but you have to believe that it's achievable, okay? So then, when you have this here, top level goal, you break it down into smaller pieces. So you sit down and you have to think about, okay, so what is necessary for me to get here to the very top. Let's break it down into several bullet points, right? So for example, in orienteering, if you're aiming for, let's say the world championship, then some of the things that you might write down on this middle level will be things like, okay, so maybe I need to run that fast for three kilometers on track. Maybe I need to um, make sure that I'm consistently making less than one minute's mistake during my forest or sprint races. Maybe you are aware that you have some problems with running with the map and let's say that you're not great at keeping direction just running with the compass with not many features around you. So you, you can write down that you have to improve your technique of navigating with just the compass. So things like that will be necessary for you uh, to create this, these middle steps that will help you understand what is actually needed to get you to the very top, okay? And I think this is one of the hardest parts of this whole exercise, to figure out those missing pieces, because sometimes, sometimes you might not be aware of what you're missing. But what is important is to be aware of the fact that you might not know everything and that you might have to search for those things. So it's totally okay to write a mid-level goal that says something like, I need to figure out what I'm missing to be running uh, or to be making less than one minute mistake during my forest races. Because maybe you don't know that but it's possible to figure it out. And then you can take this to your coach or to your colleagues and you can talk about it. Uh, you can compare the analysis from your past races and figure out what, what was missing in, in, in all of those races that you made bigger mistakes and find the answer, right? But it's important to have it written down somewhere so that you do not forget that maybe there are some elements that you're not aware of at this point in time. And now if you have this middle level, of course, you take it another notch down. And this last step is more or less a daily list of tasks. So this will definitely be your training plan, right? You're, you, you have training plan and you know that on Monday you're doing this, on Tuesday you're running that, on Wednesday you're doing something else. But also remember to include in this training plan or in your daily list things that are not focused on just pure running, okay? Because the elements that are um, outside of your pure running training are also very important. So one of those exercises would be goal setting, right? That you need to do. But also the analysis of the map, right? The analysis of the terrain that you're going to, the mental preparation. So all of those things that are not connected with just pure exercises, they need to make the list as well so that you can plan time that will be needed to make, the, make those things happen, right? Because otherwise, you will be distracted by other things that um, might seem more important at that time because you will forget that there are things that need to happen. So make sure that your daily list includes everything that should actually be there and plan for it, make time for it, uh, so that later on you don't have to struggle and choose between A and B because A is already planned there, so B doesn't even exist. Two more things that I want to add regarding how the goals should look like. So there is this theory coming from the business world that the goals should be SMART. So it's S -S -M -A -R -T. So the first levels of uh, specific, measurable, achievable, 
uh, re relatable, so the goals you can relate to, and time-framed, time-bound, so that they are, you know, defined in time. For example, you can say that I want to achieve this and this by the end of the next year, right? So that's what it means. Um, and I think it's a good way to approach this, but if your goal is missing one or two of those elements, it's not the end of the world. As long as you feel passionate about it, I think that it's better to have the goal uh, that maybe is not perfect than no goals at all. So don't worry too much about that, but also try to make sure that your goals are actually specific. You understand them because this will also help you plan those mid and lower level steps better, okay? And the second thing I want to mention is that your goals should be written down with pen and paper. Again, science shows that anything that you write down with pen and paper has a stronger connection with everything that you're doing later on than when you write down these things using the computer, your, your tablet or your phone. So make sure that you actually write your goals with pen and paper and you can also keep them somewhere close by so that you get the chance to revisit those goals uh, quite often and remind yourself um, from time to time what is it that you're aiming for, what are your goals. Okay, um, so now what I want you to do, and this is especially important for the members of the Polish team, um, I want you to go into the comment section and I want you to write down your goals over there for the next season. Make sure that they are specific, make sure that um, you break them down into those mid-level sections as well. You don't have to go to the lowest level. Okay, I'm kidding, that was a joke. You don't have to do it, but you can. You don't have to do it, but you can. What I wanted to achieve is to see how you will react to it. So take a moment now to figure out how your body reacted to this. And there are several reactions that might have happened. The first one was, oh yeah, okay, I'll do that, no problem. I'll just need a moment to think about it. And that's the good reaction. This is something that you want to have. The other reaction, especially for those of you that are members of the Polish national team, because you probably felt compelled and, you know, I, I tried to look like I'm not joking, so hopefully you believe me, if you felt a, a little bit anxious about it, a little bit stressed maybe, maybe your heart started to pound a little bit faster, maybe your heart rate is a little bit faster, right? If that happened, it means that you do not feel safe, secure with sharing the goals in public. And this will, in general, cause the problem later on in the future. Because if you feel that way about your goals, um, it can be due to several reasons, but two of the most important reasons are you're shy about it and you don't want to share it with anyone. The second one is more dangerous because the second one is your fear of failure, basically. You're afraid that you will not achieve the goals. You're afraid that people will judge you for it Therefore, you don't really want to share it with anyone. And that's bad. That's bad because this kind of fear, this kind of stress will also be with you during every major competition that you will be running. And you will have to deal with it with every race. So it's better to deal with it earlier rather than later. And that's why I wanted you to go into this alleyway just a few steps so that you can figure out whether it affects you or not. If it does, think about it and figure out how to get rid of it. Maybe the previous video that is uh, posted on this channel is something that you want to watch if you haven't seen it already, because I think it's definitely one of the clues that should be really, really helpful in this area. Two more things that I want to mention before we wrap this video up. So the first one is remember that the road to the goal is also important. So you're aiming for something and you might get there, but you might also not get there. One way or another, 
you will put a lot of time and effort into taking those single steps towards the goal. And during those steps, you will learn a lot of things. You will meet lots of wonderful people. You will challenge yourself. You will overcome some obstacles. These are all the things that you definitely should enjoy along the way because these things will stay with you forever. These things will be useful anytime later and it doesn't matter if you achieve your goal or not. So enjoy the road to your goal. Enjoy the process because if you're not enjoying the process, this will be a huge struggle. And if at the end of this struggle, you will also, God forbid, fail to achieve your goal, you will be devastated. But if you learn to enjoy the, the ride, you won't really mind that much. Now, the second thing I want to say is that Lao Tzu, a fam famous Chinese philosopher, uh, said something along the lines uh, of a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And that's absolutely true. So don't wait for anything special to happen. Just take this first step. But also remember that after the first step, you need to take the second step and the third step and the fourth step and so on and so on. And somewhere along the way, there will be problems. There will be hurdles that you have to get through. There will be people standing in your way. Maybe some haters that will tell you that you can't do it, that it doesn't make sense. Maybe you will get injured. Maybe you will have problems with parents, money, colleagues, whatever, right? And these are the moments where revisiting those goals and reminding yourself what you're actually aiming for and why you're doing it is so important because they will give you, again, the strength to break those obstacles and plow forward. And not only the goals will be important over here, but also your internal motivation, also your internal strength. So remember that the mentality of the champion is that they never give up. They might fall, they might take one or two steps back, but then they get up and they move forward again. And this is something that you will definitely have to do as well if you want to achieve your super high goals that hopefully soon or maybe you already have them, you will set for yourself. And that will be all. That will be all. So I wish you all the best. If you don't have your goals, well, we are slowly approaching the end of the season. So this would probably be a good time to start thinking about them. Uh, so plan it, put it somewhere in your calendar, write down with pen and paper, with a notebook maybe, and write things down so that you have something to aim for for the next season and maybe the following seasons as well. I hope this was useful. If it was, give it a like down below. If it wasn't, give it a dislike down below. If you're not subscribed yet and you like the content, then hit the subscribe button. And obviously, if you want to share your goals in the comments, please do. I would be very interested in reading what are you aiming for um, in the next year or maybe even your long-term goals. So, thank you very much for listening and see you in the next one.